Answers for neighbors in one community tonight, a week after they came to News 9 for help. It's our top story. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rich Pierce. News 9's Tyler Madden has more tonight on what residents are calling news that's too good to be true. Major progress has been made in getting Still Street their new water lines. This is wonderful. Just wonderful. My neighbors, they're standing over here. They just can't believe it either. Nobody can believe it. Been listening to it all day because we've tried not to go down to interfere with them. A welcome sound for residents of Still Street as a construction crew began work on water lines at the bottom of their road. Just last week, we first brought you the story of Burla and Lonnie Williams and their neighbors. Burla and Lonnie have lived on Still Street since 1979 and reached out to News 9 after getting word that they were taken out of New Cumberland's $3.5 million water system improvements due to lack of funding. After years of struggling with water pressure that made everyday tasks a hassle, a story that was also brought to Hancock County Commissioner Jeff Davis. Immediately called the mayor's office to find out what was happening there. and He shared the same story. They just had to cut it out of the project. And I said, "Can we? could we be of any assistance if the, the commission would agree to it? The commission did approve and stepped up to partner with the city for the project totaling around $80,000 the commission putting up $40,000, and New Cumberland using part of their $240,000 in American Rescue Plan funds to cover the other part. All of this taking place in the span of six days. It's like it was a whirlwind. Next thing we knew, they said, you're not going to believe this. You're going to get water lines. I said, no, this isn't going to happen. This can't be, but it is. And we have you to thank. I'm telling you, if you hadn't come up here, I really think it's because of WTOV. I really do. Finally, a solution in sight for their years-long problem, with the Still Street neighborhood still feeling like it's too good to be true. When it happens, we're, I'm going to have to pinch myself because I'm not going to believe that I'm going to actually have water flowing in these lines. I mean, I'm going to have pressure. I'm going to have pressure so we can take a shower, flush the commode at the same time, uh, wash dishes, wash clothes. Now, when I spoke with New Cumberland Mayor Will White on the phone, he tells me this project is still in the planning phases, so when the neighbors can feel the effects of the new water lines is still being discussed. Reporting in Hancock County for News 9, I'm Tyler Madden. Tyler Madden, he is covering that Wintersville tornado and the damage therein. Tyler. Rich, it's still a very active scene out here. We're here on Bantam Ridge Road in Wintersville, and joining me here now is Chief hey, Harrington of the Wintersville Fire Department. Chief, you said you had a very important message that you wanted to get out to the community. Yeah, the most important thing is don't come to Bantam Ridge unless you live out here. The police are stopping all the units. If you don't have a driver's license for this area, you're not going to get in. We've got power lines down everywhere. We've got debris everywhere. So, again, we can't have sightseers back here because there's a lot of work going on trying to get the streets clear, get the power lines cleared. And so to kind of ask you about the damage that's here on this road, you've had no injuries in Wintersville so far throughout what we've seen so far. Right. We cleared all the houses initially when we got here. No injuries. Um, there were people in the structures when, when the storm hit. Um, obviously, we had a rotation here, a cloud uh, with rotation. Um, we've got, I think right now, about seven structures damaged. Plus, we had a fire in the church uh, on War Drive in Bantam Ridge, um, which is just a small fire, made possibly even from a lightning strike. Um, so right now, the seat is secure, um, no, no injuries, and, and we're just, again, trying to get control of the utilities and things like that. And just message to the community if you don't need to be out, stay at home. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, you, you know, there's going to be plenty of pictures up on, you know, on, on your station and social media, of course. But, yeah, if, if you don't live out here, the police aren't going to let you in, so don't try. Uh, we've got a fairly long line of traffic out there that we're just turning around. So, um, you know, we need a little bit of time to get, get a handle on the utilities, get the roads the rest of the way open. Um, and, and the people that are in these structures are dealing with damages and try to get, you know, water runoff and things like that controlled. So just, you know, everybody just needs to respect that and, and allow us to do our work. Chief, I appreciate the time. Stay safe out there. Right, thank you. And again, message from Winterville Fire Chief Harrington is if you don't need to be out, just stay at home. So for now, we're live here in Jefferson County, Tyler Madden. News 9, Rich, we'll send things back to you. Weirton residents meeting tonight concerned over City Council's plan to potentially use a baseball field as the spot of a new public safety facility. That's where we begin tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rich Pierce. News 9's Tyler Madden was there and has a look at some other sites city officials are discussing. Weirton's Park and Rec Board hosting a town hall Thursday night focused on concerns related to the potential use of Bowman Field as the new site of a public safety complex. I'd like to see us with a brand new police building, but uh, we haven't found the right location yet. 
Weirton's Mayor Harold Miller, along with concerned Weirton residents, came together Thursday for a presentation by Ed Bowman on the recent actions of council. Taking everyone in attendance through a timeline of events leading up to the meeting with one clear goal. Whole intent was put facts out there, educate, and then let the people decide for themselves. No current member of council is in attendance. Representing the city during the town hall was the city attorney, the police chief, the newly appointed city manager, and the mayor. Mayor Miller having a clear-cut view when asked if he thinks the field should be used. No, I don't. I, I really don't. I, I think that we have some other locations that we ought to look at first, maybe uh, more cost-effective. The mayor pointing to the history of the field and the role it has played in the city for generations. Uh, that field is used for a lot of things. And, uh, you know, I, I, when I was younger, the field wasn't as pristine as it is now. I mean, and we used to play uh, softball leagues uh, years ago. Newly appointed city manager Mike Adams pointing out that the original 37,000 square foot facility that council is working off has gone down to just over 18,000 square feet based off a needs assessment. So the needs assessment that I saw attached <coughs> to the architect's uh, responses to your questions is down, let me see, is down to, uh, I believe, I think it's 18,000. The number almost cut in half. New sites were discussed by the mayor and others, including the old Kroger lot in the old Jimmy Carey Stadium. Everyone in attendance agreeing that there is a need for an updated police facility. The department was outgrown very quickly, and there's a lot of space needed. Give us a lot of the extra spaces that we need, and give us the opportunity to get some things that we don't have right now. Bowman seeing tonight as progress. There's a lot of power in the public out there if they only exercise that power by speaking their voices. Reporting for News 9, I'm Tyler Madden. Well, today, where he received a key endorsement in his U.S. Senate race, here's News 9's Tyler Madden. Ohio Congressman Tim Ryan traveling to Steubenville Friday to campaign for the United States Senate and gaining a key endorsement. I'm running for the Senate for Steubenville, for Jefferson County, for these communities uh, in many ways that have been forgotten. Ryan at Steubenville Fire Department, where he received the endorsement of longtime U.S. Senator for Ohio, Sherrod Brown. I love the thought uh, Tim Ryan and I in the Senate will be the most pro-worker team in the United States Senate. Senator Brown choosing Steubenville to make his big announcement. Steubenville is an important community in the state. Uh, I think that Republicans now take Steubenville for granted and Democrats don't show up enough here and Tim Ryan's going to show up. Brown highlighting the importance of this upcoming Senate race with a number of key issues currently being discussed in Washington, D.C. Presidents of both parties, um, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump, had promised infrastructure and didn't deliver. And a new president, President Biden, and a new Senate is why we're going to have an infrastructure bill in the next three or four weeks. Ryan feels his background and experience will push him through the campaign. We need another you know, working class uh, person in the Senate fighting for workers, whether they're white or black or brown. Like if you're out there doing everything right, uh, you deserve someone who's going to fight like hell. And I think somebody from the Mahoning Valley understands what people have gone through here, and, and I'm going to fight like hell for them. Reporting for News 9, I'm Tyler Madden. Senator Sherrod Brown also speaking today about the IRS proposal to monitor bank accounts with $600 or more. Senator Brown saying the main focus of this is to go after billionaires. It's not going to be 600. It's going to be, it's going to be much, much more than that. And, and you know, the, the IRS already has people's tax information when they file their, their, ten, their 1040s or their W-2s. And um, the whole point of this is there are billionaires in this country that evade taxes and they're moving money in and out of accounts. And that's who we're going to catch. The proposal emerged as a potential way to recover some of the estimated $600 billion per year in unpaid taxes. Wellsburg Parks and Rec and the BDC hosting a vision session at 7 p.m. Rising gas prices have impacted not only people in the Ohio Valley, but across the country. That's where we begin tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kate Davison. And I'm Rich Pierce. Some blaming President Biden for the rise. News 9's Tyler Madden has a look at what experts say is really driving gas prices. Americans are feeling the impacts of those rising gas prices across the country, including here in the Ohio Valley. It kills me. I barely can make a buy now. 
Jason Babel makes nearly 50 food deliveries a day across Ohio and West Virginia and has been feeling the impact of the rise in prices every time he heads to the pump. Yeah, it's, uh, it cut my income in half. Uh, when I paid in gas this time last year, if I make $100 a day, I gotta, I'm, I'm only taking home 50 now because it went from running $25 a shift to 50 uh, It just ain't my gas, and that comes out of my pocket, not the company's. The recent spike, a shock to many we talked to. Six, eight months ago, 10 months ago, gas was under $2 a gallon. Now it's 316 a gallon. It's just uh, just crazy. You know, the world's lost its mind. I, I think he, uh, the Democrats, they, they, they're left holding the bag for all of this. A sticker showing President Biden pointing at those rising prices on gas pumps has some agreeing that Biden has played a major part in the increase. I believe he did do it. When Trump was president, we didn't have this. I mean, we were under $3 a gallon. It, 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 240 was about the highest, maybe 250 was the highest I've seen gas go as Trump was president. And Biden, we've got close to $4. This is a global phenomenon. The U.S. only represents 20% of uh, global oil consumption. There's not a whole lot a president, Democratic or Republican could do to try to overpower global supply and demand. Patrick DeHaan is the head of petroleum analysis for Gas Buddy. A lot of that has to do with the fact that global demand for crude oil continues to rise uh, but supply is lagging far behind, um, especially seeing the increase in the last six weeks, which we can attribute to an energy crunch that's developed in China, where there are record, uh, where they are hitting record lows in terms of uh, coal inventories. This leading China to buy all the natural gas and crude oil they can. Some saying President Biden's decision to stop a major pipeline project also plays a role. Well, he shut down the Keystone Pipeline. Yeah, that was part of it. DeHaan says that's not necessarily the case with the pipeline since it wouldn't have produced oil. Oil production has gone up as President Biden has been in the White House because the nation has been recovering from COVID-19 and oil companies are slowly increasing oil production. With winter fast approaching, he says there is no timetable on when we might start to see a decrease in prices. Even if the U.S. is in the middle of winter when demand is, is, is lower, uh, we're faced with other countries that are also recovering and they're consuming more crude oil as well. So I don't think this is going to be a quick fix. Reporting for News 9, I'm Tyler Madden.